All right, Joshua, Rebel Music History. What is this segment? And also, guys, because of how disgusting and ridiculous the algorithms are on this, we're, we're doing a music segment where we mostly can't play music, which is ridiculous. And I have some questions about that. But there is a history to these pieces of vinyl that is deep and exactly in the mission of the show. So, Joshua, what is this segment? What are we doing here? And what's the inaugural episode? Who are we talking about tonight? We're going to talk about Jimmy Cliff. And I'm excited both to just celebrate good music. And I know that there's a lot of folks who are quarantined right now and might have some extra time to explore some good music that might nourish their spirits during difficult times. Uh, but also, um, I think that as movement strategists, we can explore the power of culture, the power of music and its relationship to social movement moments. Uh, that's my hope through this, through this segment. And um, last week we talked about National Wake. This is the first kind of formal inaugural episode. And um, each one I want to, I want to share about a particular record. Uh, and first, let me set the table with Jimmy Cliff in general, before I talk about the record, uh, which is that, so Jimmy Cliff is one of my favorite artists. He's been giving us music for, uh, almost 60 years. He put out his first hit when he was 14 years old. Uh, he's a gift to the world. He's, he's been doing this since 1962. He has, and I, I appreciate every stage of his career even the like weird disco reggae moment that was like in 1968 like you know and and i think the you know so for example um uh many rivers to cross is i think one of the best songs ever written um it's a black spiritual that brings me literally to tears every time i listen to it um there's uh his song roots radical is one of the best sort of uh I think certainly reggae songs um, that's ever written. Um, even like, you know, like his song, you can get it if you really want was both the formal campaign song of the Sandinistas. And then like 30 years later, it was also used by the uh, UK uh, conservative party until he spoke out against it. Um, so he has universal appeal. Um, and uh, so I just want to situate what I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a controversial claim in a second. And so I want to situate it in, in the uh, trajectory of his whole career. So the album that I want to share, and I have a whole, again, like I have dozens of Jimmy Cliff records here. And so the one that I want to share is this one called Rebirth. And it actually came out in 2012. And uh, it's the best record of his career. I think it's one of the best records ever written. Uh, this is Grandpa Jimmy. This is like some of his most recent music. Um, this is Jimmy Cliff in a stage of his life where you hear a foot, like he moves from like joy to anger. It's gritty. It's like, it's lovely. It's praise music. It's gentle, but he's also occupying this elder role where he's telling stories about the role of reggae music throughout social struggle and throughout throughout uh, the last 60 years. It's kind of like, you know, it's sonically, it's recorded in a traditional format. So it sounds uh, in a higher quality version of like the heyday of Studio One. Um, and then stylistically, it sounds like there's songs that sound like they're like, you know, ska music coming out of a sound system on Orange Street in Kingston in 1968, you know? And it, it traverses like Jamaican soul, roots reggae, rock steady, like kind of the best of his work. And um, it, uh, let me actually just talk about it for like it, it, it's all, the record's all political, but a lot of his music is political, you know? So he has, uh, he has a song called Children's Bread. That's like, they took the children's bread and gave it to the dogs. That's about class war. Um, he has a song that's like, just about him celebrating life as an elder that's called one more. And he's like, one more, like I got one more life to live. I got one more arrow in my bow. I'm not stopping. And I, and I think that song in particular in this moment, when a lot of us feel the fatigue of this work, uh, it encourages us to keep on going. Uh, he has a song called reggae music where he literally tells the story of the role of music in Jamaican independence through the civil rights era. And he's like, sit down, son, I'm gonna tell you a story about why this matters. Um, 
he has a song called Blessed Love. So, I mean, like it's spiritual music, right? So he's like blessing up different peoples around the world. He like intentionally blesses up Gaza in that song. It's amazing. But the uh, historical piece that I want to talk about specifically is he does a cover of the song Guns of Brixton. And so Guns of Brixton is uh, a song that The Clash wrote um, that, so let's actually pause and let's talk about the Brixton riots. So in 1981, there's a neighborhood in South London that's mostly Jamaican immigrants. It's a black neighborhood that is not just economically depressed, but they're experiencing the equivalent of literal stop and frisk laws. This was, you know, the the stop and frisk laws in New York City that are, have, you know, under Bloomberg and uh, Giuliani. Was, they've started under Giuliani, right? Yeah. Um, those were pioneered in the 80s in, in, um, in England. They were often called no sus laws. It was basically like if you were young and you were black, you could be stopped and harassed. Uh, by cops. And so there's tremendous tension between cops and black youths. Um, and there was a lot of hate crimes happening. And there was the, the, the precursor to this was that there were some, some hate crimes in which uh, a number of black youth were murdered uh, in an arson. And the cops not only obviously didn't help the situation, but they were clearly on the side of the arsonists. They pretended it wasn't a hate crime. And so there was all of this uh, tension bubbling up in, in South London and Brixton. And there was an altercation between a black youth and a cop. Uh, it was really confusing the, what happened, but um, basically 5,000 people came out into the street and rioted. And um, it was a dramatic riot that, um, you know, a lot of buildings and cars were burned. Um, there, I mean, it was, it was a big deal. And there are a lot of bands that wrote songs about it. A lot of reggae music has songs about it. Like there's, there's a Black Uhuru song. Um, there's a Steel Pulse song. There's a Linton Kwesi Johnson song, uh, Prince Farai. Um, there's also conflicts. Um, there's a rancid song. There's angelic upstarts. There's the Pet Shop Boys. So there's a lot of music that's come, that's written about this moment that is lifting up uh, and um, sort of showing the world what young black people, in particular Jamaican immigrants, are going through in England in the early '80s. Uh, but the most popular song is from the Clash, and so the Clash writes this song, "The Guns of Brixton," and they follow this through line that is inspired by Jimmy Cliff. It's inspired by, I actually have a, uh, the soundtrack of The Harder They Come. So the narrative is from this movie, The Harder They Come. And so The Harder They Come is the first international film to come out of Jamaica. It's the first popular films to have patois in it. It's the first time that a lot of young black people actually see themselves on screen. Uh, and it is, it like depicts like, poor people struggling to survive, working class Jamaicans, it like popularizes, not just, it, it, like, it, it's often credited for, for how reggae music caught fire globally and certainly in the UK. Um, and so the uh, Jimmy Cliff stars in the movie and he plays this character called Ivan. It's, it, this is one of the best movies of all time, I think. You should watch The Harder They Come for sure. Um, I'm gonna unmute myself to say, yeah. watch The Harder They Come. It's so good. It's so good. So and good. it's so good. I, and it, I mean, the, just the like part of the storyline is he gets displaced from rural Jamaica and then he has to, he has to struggle in Kingston and like he tries to escape to Cuba. Anyway, I won't give away the whole storyline. It's worth watching. And so the clash gets inspired by Jimmy Cliff uses Jimmy Cliff's character and story to write a song about the Brixton riots. Then several decades later in this album, Jimmy Cliff covers that song that he inspired and it comes full circle. And his, his cover of Guns of Brixton, I think is better than the original, which is a rare thing. And, um, it, and, and the best version of it. And so there's something to me that's particularly profound about grandpa Jimmy as an elder putting out what I think is the best record of his career that, uh, pays homage to the way that he inspired people. So there's this kind of like meta owning of his legacy and like taking credit for his legacy that is, is uplifting all of these stories of resistance, particularly the Brixton riots, which by the way, had 
a tremendous amount of impact. Um, I mean, we, we, we could break down sort of the, the social movement role of a riot, but there was this thing in 1984 called the Police and Criminal Eviction Act in, uh, that basically ended their version of stop and frisk that was the consequence of these riots. Uh, and so, um, and that likely wouldn't have happened if it were not for all of this music lifting up that story. Uh, so it's, it's all come full circle. Check out Jimmy Cliff Rebirth. That's amazing. And also, I just want to say, I just, I just checked the discord and I'm sorry, I'm missing it. Uh, but somebody wrote, um, I think it's Solile. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but, and this is true. One of the first shows I've ever hosted in my life back in the majority report days, it was an old Matt and Michael Monday. And I used Guns of Brixton, but the Jimmy Cliff version as an interstitial before the horrible new reign of Google and YouTube, where you cannot use uh, music, uh, even in a public domain sense, which is, of course, an assault on culture. And But they just wrote, Guns of Brixton was featured as an interstitial on an old Matt and Mike Monday, and it's been stuck in my head ever since. Nice. Yep. I love that. I love, and I also, as a friend... Um, you know, I remember one of the times when you and I uh, got to hang out and uh, and we had like an old style listening party yeah. <laughs> and uh, and got to listen to that track. And it's rich. Look it up. Yeah. Listen. And I like I also like like the whole. Yeah. Like Jimmy Cliff is special. Listen to the whole Jimmy Cliff ha uh, catalog for sure. Yeah. I just the whole like that song encapsulates it, but also the whole record is like it's so lovely and gritty at the same yes. time. And I, th I think yes. that's what the U S left needs to be right now. It's like lovely and gritty. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. Oh man. You nailed that with the Jimmy cliff. That's this is essence TMBS right here. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.